When provided with an equation which consists of more than one operation, it is helpful to break it down into more manageable chunks to make it easier to read, understand and if need be, to debug. Also, if operations within the calculation are repeated, it avoids code repetition. In this video, I will explain how to break down this calculation into six logical steps, then provide two coding examples. I will use DAX in Power BI, but the same principles apply in other languages. In example one, I set up separate fields to take component parts of the calculation. And in example two, I set up one field and use variables to break down the overall calculation into separate parts. This video uses a finance calculation, but you do not need to understand the calculation to follow this example, as this video is more about suggestions of how you may wish to approach a long calculation. The BODMAS rules of mathematics will be considered. In this example, we have brackets, multiplication and subtraction. Here is my Power BI report, which relates to products being sold. For each item, I know its sales price, its cost, and it's a portion of indirect costs. I also know the number of each item sold in January, and I know that the tax rate is 20%. The purpose of the calculation is to work out how much profit is being made on the sales of these products after tax. And to do that, I will use this simplified profit after tax calculation. Again, you don't have to understand the calculation. It's more about understanding how to split up a calculation to make it easier for writing the code. I will break this calculation down into these six parts. These same parts will be used in example one and example two. How did I arrive at these six parts? Well, in the calculation, the first opening bracket has the matching closing bracket here. I will begin by breaking this section down. Within the section, there are two sets of brackets nested within the outer brackets to consider. I look at these nested brackets first as I work from the inside, then branch outwards. Looking at the first set of nested brackets, there are two items within the brackets being number sold times sales price. My first step will be to only consider these two items which together calculate the income from the sale of the products. Hence, this is my sales. So sales equals the number sold multiplied by sales price. I will return to the minus sign in a moment. But next, I will look at the second set of nested brackets. The number sold multiplied by the costs associated with selling that specific product. So I will call that cost of sales. So cost of sales equals the number sold times the cost of each item. I have dealt with the two sets of nested brackets. So now I consider the minus sign. So sales minus cost of sales gives us the gross profit for step three. And for gross profit, I use the names given to each part of the calculation in step one and step two. Gross profit equals sales minus cost of sales. Then I look at the next minus sign, which indicates I need to subtract the indirect costs. Gross profit less indirect costs will give me profit before tax. So that's what I will call the next step. And profit before tax is gross profit. Again, I use the name given in the previous step and then say minus indirect costs. At this point, I have broken down the first part of the overall calculation. There is a minus sign after the closing bracket for this first section and I will return to that in a moment. But meantime, 
In the next section of this calculation, I have an opening bracket here and a closing bracket here. And again, I have nested brackets. But if you look carefully at this part of the calculation, you can see it repeats the first section. So in this section, we are using profit before tax again. I don't need to write any new code as we have already created the profit before tax in step four. Hence, by breaking down the calculation in this way, code repetition is avoided as I don't need to recreate steps one to four I just use step four. This section is calculating the tax payable. So the tax payable is the profit before tax multiplied by the tax rate. In step five, tax equals, and I use the profit before tax calculated at step four and multiply this by the tax rate. In the final step, as all the brackets have been considered, the only operation not yet looked at is the minus sign here, which is required to calculate the profit after tax. So profit after tax equals profit before tax minus tax. And we've already calculated these two elements. So we just write profit after tax equals profit before tax minus tax. And that is the breakdown of the calculation complete. Now to write the code in Power BI. In example one, I put each step into a new calculated column. I am using calculated columns for ease of this demonstration, but there are other methods of creating the component parts in Power BI, such as using measures. So you would need to consider which method best suits your requirements. For speed, I have already set up the calculated columns in my table called finances. So for sales, in my calculated column, I take the existing field for number sold in the data set and multiply it by the existing field for sales price. For cost of sales, likewise, I take the number sold and multiply it by the cost of each item. Again, taking both figures from my original data set. For gross profit, I use the new sales column from step one and then the cost of sales column from step two. For profit before tax, Again, I use the gross profit column created at step three, then minus the existing indirect cost field, which is part of the original data set. For tax, I take the profit before tax from step four and multiply it by the tax rate. The tax rate is contained in a measure called tax rate which is currently set to 20%. Then profit after tax is the profit before tax column created at step four minus the figures in the tax column created at step five. By placing each step separately in calculated columns, any visualization can use any of the steps on their own or in combination with others. For example, in the table shown here, I would like the reader to see the figures calculated at each step. The second example uses variables to store each step. Purely for the purposes of this demonstration, I have set up a table called Finance 2 which contains only the original data set columns. This time, I will only set up one calculated column. To begin with, I give my column a name. Profit after tax and say it equals. Then to make the code easier to read, I will set up each variable on a new row. 
To do this on a Windows computer, I press Shift and Return. I type var. In DAX, var stands for variable. Then I need to give the variable a name. And in keeping with the name of the steps, I will call it sales and say it equals. Then I select the name of the field I would like in my data set, which is number sold. So in finances, two, I select number sold. Then I multiply it by. Then again, I am selecting a field in my finances to, which is the sales price. On a new row, I set up the variable cost of sales and say it equals. Again, from my finances to table, I would like the number sold. And I multiply that by, from my finances to table, the cost of each item. On a new row, I set up another variable and call this one gross profit. And I say this equals, and this time I use the names of my newly created variables. So I am using the variable sales from line two so I type in sales minus and I want to deduct the cost of sales. Again, using the variable in line three. So cost of sales. And a new row, I'll set up my variable profit before tax and say that equals gross profit minus and from my finances table, I'd like the indirect costs. On a new row, again, my next variable is tax, which equals the profit before tax in row five, multiplied by the tax rate. My tax rate is contained within a measure so I select the measure here in a new row. My last variable is my profit after tax. And I say that that equals my profit before tax minus my tax from line six. Once I have set up the variables, I need to display the resulting value. And to do this, I add return. So in a new line, return. And then I say what I would like to be returned, which is the variable profit after tax. If I now click the tick mark to submit my code, let's see if this has worked. Into this table, I have added the new calculated profit after tax figure. All looks good. And I can compare this profit after tax figure in example two to the profit after tax in example one. And as you can see, they both agree. There is a lot more to consider when using variables than that covered in this video. For example, you need to make sure you understand the scope. And for DAX, remember, all variables are local. Currently, there are no global variables. This means nothing outside this code can access the variables set up here as the variables are local to the expression in which they are created. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and if you would like to hear more from me, please click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.